ravi de participer à ce congrès exceptionnel. J'aimerais remercier les gens de la Nouvelle-Écosse ainsi qu'Halifax de leur hospitalité. J'aimerais que vous les applaudissiez vous aussi. Merci à tout le monde. I am so thrilled to welcome our next guest to the stage. Sukhinder Sikh Cassidy is a leading digital media and marketing executive with over 18 years of leadership experience, founding and scaling global and early stage tech company, including Google, Amazon, Yoldi, Polyvore, Joyos, and Newscore. Après avoir constaté qu'environ 70 à 75 des entreprises technologiques privées n'avaient pas de femmes dans leur conseil d'administration, elle a fondé The Board List, qui vise à corriger cette sous-représentation. Avec une base de données de plus de 1000 candidates, The Board List met en relation des femmes qualifiées et des entreprises technologiques privées. Non seulement cela stimule la diversité, mais aussi comme nous le savons, les entreprises qui comptent plus de femmes dans leurs conseils perçoivent des rendements sensiblement meilleurs. Véritable pionnière, elle a été nommée l'une des personnes les plus créatives en affaires par Fast Company, l'une des Silicon Valley 100, The Business Insider and Power Woman Summer Forbes. Veuillez accueillir l'impressionnante Suk Ender Singh Cassidy. Merci. We gotta lay down the tracks and tear up the trails. Open your heart, let the life blood flow. Gotta get on our way, cause we're moving too slow. Bring in Hello, the workers and bring And thank you for having me. Je m'appelle Sukinder Singh Cassidy. J'habite en Californie. Mais maintenant et toujours, je suis Canadienne. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I understand that I am all that stands between you and the Argyle Street celebrations. <laughs> so my goal for our last session is to keep the energy high and remind us why we are all here. Pour commencer, to begin, what I'd like to do is share with you my personal journey and call upon each of you as leaders, as citizens, as members of the Liberal Party, to call upon you to think about your leadership framework a little differently. As we head into 2019, I would submit to you, there has never been a bigger opportunity than the one before us. And that is the opportunity to let power flow. A little bit about me. I grew up in St. Catharines, Ontario, the daughter of two Sikh doctors. And my very first definition of power, I witnessed as the receptionist in their medical office. What I learned from watching my parents practice were two very personal definitions of power. Number one, power as being the ability to impact others. And number two, in watching my father, a small business entrepreneur who loved running a practice as much as he loved helping people, the power of creativity, the power to decide for yourself, the power of autonomy, the power of free choice. These are my very first memories of power. I went on to go to the University of Western Ontario to the Ivy Business School, where I graduated with an undergraduate in honors uh, business. And then my career moved around the world. I went first to New York, then to London, and finally ended up almost 20 years ago in Silicon Valley, where I began my career as a digital executive. In all of that time, I felt like I got to witness, as my career ascended, very different uh, power corridors old power corridors, new power corridors. When I started my career, it was investment banking. And what I learned there was that money equals power. I went on to work for News Corp and British Sky Broadcasting in London. And there I learned that the ability to communicate, content, entertain people was power, and also hierarchy. I moved on to Silicon Valley, where I started three companies and ended up as president of APAC and LATAM for Google. And there I learned that creativity and technology create power and hierarchy. And I moved on to found my last company, The Board List, which we just talked about uh, several years ago, 
where I was once again reminded of the power of being an entrepreneur, of being the creator, and watching the venture capital flow from people on Sand Hill Road down to companies like mine, also defining power. But as my career continued to ascend, I learned one fundamental thing as I was rising the ranks at Google and increasing my span of control. I had an aha moment, and that aha moment came when I continued to find myself in situations where the company was growing like this, and I continued to be stretched. And as my control and span of control and number of employees and responsibility all increased, I found myself drowning. And I learned in those moments a very um, specific and different thing, which was I had been learned and taught my whole life, including in Silicon Valley, that power was precious, that power was scarce, that if you had it, you need to hold it close. And I learned as I tried to grow myself and be more successful that, in fact, my highest and most leveraged moments were when I gave power away. I now call that the you manage me or I manage you principle. What would you prefer? And what I really learned is that by starting to give power away to my teams, to the people working with me, and think about my job as less having all the answers and more the ability to help them discover the answers, that they found leverage and I found leverage and together we found success. So I started to give away power. I started to give away more and more power. And the more power I gave away, the more power I got. The more I gave it away, the more I ascended. And that fundamental truth is what we're here to talk about today. I appeal to you all as leaders, as leaders of your community, as leaders in government, as leaders in business, to think about your leadership opportunity a different way. I appeal to you to think about this one thing, good leaders, harness power. They take it and try to make the wisest decisions to have the most impact. Great leaders distribute power. Great leaders recognize that fundamentally, power is not a finite resource. Power is not scarce. As you know from this room, power is abundant. And it's time for each of us as leaders to think about ourselves in a pretty unique way, to think about ourselves as a power grid. Each of you in this room is a power grid. How does the world look different when each of us thinks about ourselves as a power grid? Well, one really interesting thing happens. We go from living in a framework of the powerful, right, of the few, right? of the people who have it and the people who don't, to thinking about power flow. We realize that our fundamental opportunity as leaders is not to be powerful. It is to let power flow. So what does that mean? What does it mean to let power flow? I say here, I, I talk to you, I've flown to Halifax to give you this message. Why? What is it about power flow? Well, power flow implies a few different things. It implies that each of you has, has the opportunity to let power flow in all directions and to presume as it flows away from you that it multiplies. That is your fundamental opportunity. What is your second fundamental opportunity? In this notion of power flow, what is it? It is to presume that each one of us, each one of you, has power to give, has power to receive, and has power to share. Every single person in this room. But it's interesting, because if you want to share power with someone, what needs to happen? It presumes that everybody understands their unique opportunity and your unique responsibility to lead. The principles of power flow require us, require each of us, to pick up the mantle of leadership and to understand we are not victims of anyone else. We are all ourselves, a source, a giver, and a receiver of, en of energy, and of power, and the mantle of leadership. 
Of course, and this is very known to you as members of the Liberal Party, to the government we have today, that systems fundamentally thrive, any system, a community, a government, a citizenry, a company, a board, they all thrive when all the available talent, when all the available capacity, when all the available capability in any system is accessed. That is what power flow is about. Examples of power flow, if you look around, you will start to see them everywhere. Yes, I run a company that is about power flow. We'll talk about that. You may have heard of platforms, platforms like change.org, movements like Me Too and Time's Up, companies like the Canadian startup Hubba that helps suppliers of product find their buyers. I've reversed completely the paradigm in which we think about power. Let me give you one very simple example. The company I run, called The Board List, essentially is a talent marketplace where people who sit on boards, people in power today, put up their hand and nominate emerging talent to join them in the boardroom. They open wide the doors of the boardroom and have thought for themselves that boardrooms and companies only get better when instead of keeping those doors closed, they open them and invite others to join them in the boardroom. Their reward, better companies, better boards, the feeling of having created more leverage for themselves and everyone they work with when talent flows easily. So why now? Why this conversation now? We're sitting here in the midst of not just Canadian disruption, but complete global disruption. Technology disruption, digital disruption, are causing new ways of working everywhere we look. The future of work itself has a new workforce that holds its leaders accountable to the way in which they run their companies. Citizens who hold their leadership and their governments accountable to the way they run their countries. And a changing and new demographic, millennials, Gen Z, an aging and ever more vocal and wealthy older demographic, populations that themselves have discovered that they have the opportunity to vote their pocketbooks, their dollars, their conscience every time they make a choice. And why Canada? Why come back here to give this message? We all know you would not be here. You would not be members of this party. You would not be here if not for recognizing the unique opportunity that Canada has. In fact, the place I grew up, the place you all enjoy the privilege of living, is a place of remarkably open leadership, remarkable multiculturalism and inclusion, and of course, open for business globally. And why you? Why you? Right. Why should power flow be something that each and every one of you thinks about? It's simple. You sit here today as Canada's leaders. You are community activists. You are business builders, big and small. You are civic leaders and members of government. If the mantle of leadership and the opportunity for power flow as a new paradigm to think about how Canada evolves falls on anybody, it falls on you. So how does it happen? How do you let the power flow? How do you discard the obvious opportunity, which is to become powerful, and replace it with something much better and far more infinite? I'd ask you to do three key things. Number one, it sounds very simple, but people find it very hard. Start pushing power out every way you can. Push it sideways, push it down, don't push it up. Push it out in every direction. And as you do so, if you are in a position of power of any kind, because everyone in this room is, pull people in. Your unique opportunity is to pull people in. Number two, embrace the opportunity to lead. As we talked about, there is no system of power anywhere particularly one that disrupts power this way, that does not count on 
every citizen doing their part to lead, every individual understanding the power they have and embracing the opportunity to do more. And the third idea I'll leave you with, perhaps the one that is actually most challenging of all, but the one that has the most opportunity, is to think about who you give power to. Let me tell you, for all of us, it will be pretty natural to give power away to the people in our networks. Right? When we talk about giving power away, it is easy in some ways for me to give power to the colleague who's grown up beside me at Google, to the person who is sitting in the boardroom beside me. You know, to people who look like me, it actually turns out it's rather simple to give away power if you choose to do it. But to whom is it much harder to give away power? The real opportunity for power flow is not for the people within your network, but it is to reach beyond your network. It is to reach beyond your network and create an inclusive and powerful society where every single citizen and every single consumer and every single person is empowered. And to reach beyond those things that are comfortable to you to those that are not. So, I want to leave you with this message as I sit here today and I think back on the parents who raised me in St. Catharines, Ontario, and the images of power they showed me. I'll end where I started. My father and my mother taught me that power is about impact. My father and mother taught me that power is about creativity. But most of all, I lived in a family and a place Right? We all live in a place where there was generosity of spirit and I lived in a feeling always of abundance. Right? That was the gift to me and that is the gift each of you has the opportunity to give to others. So as you are generous in spirit, I challenge you all collectively to think about being generous with your power and to collectively let us all let power flow for the benefit of this entire nation. Thank you so much.